Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our daily get-together live from Facebook at 10.30 in the morning every day, getting together to exchange news, stories, headlines, tips, gossip, good stuff, not so good stuff, you name it, everything goes, well, not quite everything, but you know, we try to stick to things that are important, that are positive, that make our lives better here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Um, if you're new to these broadcasts, please let, let us know by writing the word new. And if you're live in the show, we'll try to give you a proper welcome. We would love to find out where you are, how you found out about Coffee and Headlines. And my name, of course, is Paco Ojeda, and I am this crazy person that decided to do this and is having a wonderful time. I'm having a wonderful time, and I really hope you're having a wonderful time getting together. Some days are easier than others. Some days flow like there's news and there's great conversation. Other days are just not so easy, but I mean, that's the nature of the beast. Regardless, I enjoy it very much. As always, it's great to see a lot of familiar people. Uh, it is always wonderful to see people that I'm getting to know better and better, uh, like Rita, who sent me a wonderful suggestion that I'm going to share with you today, or Marge, that inspired me to share an important headline that I found on PBS today, I mean, last night. So it is It is really, really wonderful because um, it, the, the things that we share are as much things that I find out as much as the things that that you find out, and that's what makes it so rich for me. Oh, DM Van Pelt is back. I'm sorry, I'm gonna not make fun of your name, DM Van Pelt, but I'm gonna keep saying it because that P just feels good, and I hope you're not offended. If you're offended, I'll buy you some tacos when you get here, I promise. Okay, so today, we have all kinds of stuff, good stuff, not so good stuff, etc., etc. We're going to revisit this whole business of the trees that were cut off, uh, that were removed from the Riviera of the Rio Quale here in the city. Uh, things got a little tense between our mayor and the rector of the university, who I've come to find out knows more about this stuff than I realized. Uh, realized diction. And we're also going to take a look at some new rules that are becoming more relaxed as far as where we can go and cannot go. Uh, what else are we going to look at? We're going to look at the craziest food you can find, a fusion of, well, you're going to have to see it. It made my stomach turn funny. Maybe um, it's because I've been sick, but I don't know. We'll have to take a look at it. And we're going to take a look at some beautiful, beautiful photographs. So let us get started. Um, oh, God, DM Van Pelt has given me green light to have fun with this. You're going to regret that, my friend. No, I'm just kidding. Let's take a look at the news. So as I mentioned, um, now that I've been reading more about this, I didn't know that the rector... Um, uh, the headmaster, the, the main hunter at the university here is a renowned biologist and he's one of the best biologists in the region. So um, at the beginning, I didn't quite understand what was the rector of the university doing involved in this affair. And lo and behold, he went back to the river with uh, proper authorities. And um, again, he criticized what has happened on along the river. If you look at the photos, and I have three articles to reference about this, um, he regretted that a large number of trees were um, removed from from the riverbed um, in alleged prevention for the rainy season. Um, of course, this ruffled the mayor's feathers um, somewhat in an article that I didn't um, reference today because it's more about political comment. There was apparently a heated conversation between the rector of the university and Mayor Davalos because um, in Davalos' view, the mayor's view, what they were doing was perfectly legitimate, even though it took them 20 years to do it. And I'll tell you why I say that in a second. And of course, the rector, I've come to find out, along with the, one of the other directors of biology in the university, are appointees that came to live in Puerto Vallarta as part of a political 
arrangement between our governor and the mayor. Now, that sounds really fishy, but these kinds of things go on all the time. I don't want you to feel frightened about this. You know, when certain politicians get certain public positions, a lot of times it comes along with, well, you have to bring along so-and-so into your administration, so forth and so on. So what I gather is that things are not quite rosy between the the rector of the university and Mayor Davalos. I don't know the details, but what is important is that some agreements were made to ensure that no further tree trimming is going to take place and that the city municipality is going to rely or collaborate or withstand, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, um, on the university for how they're going to proceed with these tree trimmings moving forward. The university even presented or is going to present certain plans that could make the riverbed or the sides of the river more like a public park. So what and when is going to happen about this, we don't know. But again, the third headline that I wanted to reference today, this is a very clear photo of what the riverbed looks like right now. And it is devastating to see, especially when you're not an educated eye like mine, because in my eyes, all I see is all the trees that used to be there and all the, 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 the animals that surely used to live there. But what this third headline tells us is that the state's commission of uh, Medio Ambiente, of, 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 for the environment, the state's commission for the environment is now getting involved and they are going to research, they say, up till the ultimate consequences, how it is that this decision was made in Puerto Vallarta to see now I'm even waving my hands like a politician. Somebody stop me. Um, they're going to look into how this this decision came to be. It is worth mentioning something that has a, a valid point. What we don't know, and, and when I say by we, I mean those of us that got here uh, 20 years ago or, or, or less than 20 years ago, is that the original path that that river used to follow was different. It was twisted and crooked, and it was a lot more prone to flooding whenever uh, the rains were really strong. So over 20 years ago, I don't know the exact date, but, but, but my friend Catherine reminded me of this fact, um, a major um, project was undertaken by the city in which they changed the path of the river, making it more uh, along a straight line so that when the water would overflow, it would do so without ca causing so much damage. So. On the one hand, we have the municipality saying, well, we needed to do this because 20 years ago we dredged and we're just getting around to doing the follow-up work. And on the other hand, you have the biologist saying, well, this really does look fishy. We're going to look into this. Um, again, it's difficult to um, appreciate this from an untrained eye. But I am, as I said yesterday, very, very glad to see that these kinds of situations are not going unresearched and unfounded and that the citizenship is more um, prone uh, to raising their voices, our voices, and, and, and in, in places or situations where there is concern. And apparently all the articles that I mentioned do reflect the fact that a lot of people raised their voice and said, you know, what the fuck? You know, what is going on there? Anyhow, let's go back to headlines because there's a few more that I want to share with you, um, such as this one. A lot of um, the merchants and business owners along the Malecon met with the mayor uh, saying, well, you know, we're ready. Please reopen the Malecon for everybody. Um, and the mayor did not allow this. Although I'm reading uh, from this article that the that the Malecon in Marina Vallarta is open for pedestrians. Um, and just in walking around in the last few days, I know that from the, the, the pedestrian bridge on the Rio Cuale heading south into Emiliano Zapata, there is no obstruction, as you saw from the video that I posted a few days ago. There are a lot of people walking about, but not in the original Malecon and its extension, not yet. But uh, we did find out 
that one of the consequences of this meeting is that now um, restaurants that are located along the Malecon will be allowed to place tables right outside, right outside of their businesses. So if you want to dine al fresco on the Malecon, this portion of the Malecon is going to be reopened this weekend. So for all I know, if you wanted to sit at the Malecon and have a beer and enjoy uh, the breeze, you will be able to do this. Um, that said, if you are a soccer player or if you are hoping for the city to reopen spaces where you can practice soccer or other sports activities, um, this is not reopening just yet. Unfortunately, the numbers um, uh, for the virus, the statistics did not meet the, the expectation of the government for them to loosen up these types or loosen up access to these types of facilities. By the way, um, right before this broadcast, I took a look at uh, the Facebook page of our governor, Enrique Alfaro, because that's where he usually posts his weekend um, uh, numbers for the following week, and he nothing has been posted yet. So we may have to sneak at least one bit of news tomorrow during um, during Sunday Funday, if we have to, uh, if there are news that are considerably important. If not, we're just not going to think about the news tomorrow, and we're going to try to laugh a little bit. Speaking of numbers, um, the numbers uh, were released by the federal government, and an increasing number of states throughout the country are now shifting from red to orange. That means that in many of the states in the country, the number of cases is starting to subside. It's starting to go down, or apparently that's how I interpret this. We should remember that these federal numbers mean only so much here in the state of Jalisco, because as you recall, our state has decided to go by its own numbers. Um, I should mention also that I was walking again a few days ago around um, Olas Altas and, um, and um, the farmacias, you know, there's a couple of farmacias in the Olas Altas neighborhood that are famous because you can get all kinds of prescription medications without a prescription. Um, and I was amused uh, to see, you know, that usually if you've walked around Olas Altas, you know that they have these handwritten signs that mention all the, the drugs that you can get without a prescription like Valium and this and that. And, um, and just a few days ago, I saw a sign that said um, hydroxychloroquine. Um, and, uh, and I also saw one for dexamethasone, which now uh, Lopez Gatel tells us that the effectiveness of dexamethasone, this steroid, uh, in, in, in dealing with COVID-19 has not been uh, researched enough. So if you are the kind of person that is prone to, um, to wanting to try your own drugs and stuff like that, tread carefully, my friends, because these are not for the faint-hearted. Um, getting sound doctor advice is always, I think, the best course of action. Um, before we switch into the f more leisurely stuff, let me take a quick look at your comments. Um, I did happen to, men uh, to watch that somebody asked how I was feeling, and I'm feeling much better. I'm starving, and so that's got to be a sign that I'm feeling much better. I could kill for some tacos al pascor right now. Um, boom, 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 boom. Good morning from Las Vegas. We saw that Mr. Van Pelt is with us. Um, happy Catter Day to Luna. Oh, Luna's going to perform a trick in a little in a little while. Just you watch. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, yes, my friend Catherine continues to comment about this. Um, don't get booted, Sherry. Um, don't get booted. Don't get booted. Uh, the last thing we need is more hotels for condos. Well, you see, that's the thing. I don't know if you're referring, Carlos, specifically to the river. It is easy knowing how past administrations have made last minute decisions and things like that. It is easy to fear that something murky might be going on with all that land that they cleared. And we certainly don't want to be untrusting of the government. But, 
Jesus. We've been shafted in past administrations. So again, I am happy to see that people are questioning more and more these decisions that seem just a little fishy. Hola, prima. My cousin is, is saying hello from, from Dallas, I believe. Um, surprise, gyms are open, but not sports parks. Um, I hear you, David. Um, I don't get it myself, but I think it has to do with crowds. Uh, again, I'm, I don't have the expertise to know why they're not allowing this yet. I would think that if people are walking down the Malecon, um, people would be judicious enough to know, you know, to get out of the way of someone that is walking towards them. But but what do I know? You know, hopefully these things will change in the near future. I understand that a lot of these decisions may seem arbitrary, but again, you know, we have to remember that governments and businesses and health professionals, they're dealing with unknown situations and they're just trying to make the best decisions that they can, even when sometimes they feel funny to us. Um, uh, DM wants to support street vendors. Uh, no, you will find street vendors around the city, of course. Um, I would, oh my God, no, okay. Here's my friend Noi from Thailand. We were just chatting. Hold on, let me answer Van Pelt's uh, question. You will find vendors. You will find vendors, and it's very kind of you to want to support them. Um, just be mindful of the fact that you want to be wearing a face mask. They want to be wearing a face mask. It's for each other's safety, um, and I'm sure it'll be wonderful that... Um, that uh, you want to support them. My friend Noi, who used to be the chef, executive chef at Dakri Dix, she is with us. She's just started getting involved in the video bandwagon. She has a new Facebook page, which I shared with you a few days ago. If you know Noi from her years at um, Dakri Dix, uh, please support her. Um, and Noi, please share your, your Facebook page with us so that people can see it, or else I will share it in the comments when we're done. Um, um, is there an antibody test available here yet? Well, that's the test that I took yesterday. It was an antibody test, a rapid test. So um, unless we're talking about different things, uh, the answer to your question, Geoff, is yes. Uh, good morning, Thomas. I need a haircut. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, oh, well, thank you for that, Ray. I actually feel well enough that I know for a fact that I'm going to be out and about with the camera around the Kuala River this afternoon. I want to see what's going on out there. And, um, and, uh, and yes, we will be, we will be sharing something. Uh, what scares me is all the published photos from Malecon don't show anyone in masks. Well, <coughs> excuse me, Amanda, there are photos with people not wearing masks all around the world. And I don't mean to put a gray cloud over your day. There are people that are following guidelines. There are people that are not following guidelines. It's the nature of the beast. We all need to make um, personal decisions as to how we're going to um, carry on in these situations. Um, I can only speak for myself as I often do and I wear mine as I've said before. I invite you to wear yours and um, and if you feel it's too threatening to go out you know just wait a little longer you know wait until it feels right for you to move forward through the new normal. No shaming going on in this in this space. No shaming. It is scary. And it is thought provoking, especially because, you know, I'm nursing a cold and, you know, I got tested for COVID-19 yesterday. The test came out negative. Trust me, I am feeling a little edgy, but the virus is not going away. We need to learn how to coexist with it. Um, da, 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 da. That's a very good point. Again, Troy, we don't make the rules. We can just choose to walk those paths or not. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you, uh, the good thing is that we live in a place where you can go walking in all kinds of wonderful places. So if you want to go to the Malecon, maybe the Malecon wants to wait a little longer. So with that said, um, let me go into the weather and some leisurely stuff. I want you to see the most disgusting thing I have seen 
served on a plate in a long time. But first, let's take a look at the weather. And here we go. Our snarky carrot weather tells us that it's 83 degrees. It feels like 90. Uh, humidity is at 75%. There's a little bit of cloud coverage, 20%. And Snarky Carrot says, GLaDOS and I had a thing once. It did not end well. There was cake everywhere. I don't know who GLaDOS is, so that means nothing to me. Otherwise, the weather forecast says that it's going to be mostly clear for the hour. So I need to preface this by saying that if you find yourselves in the city of Querétaro, there is a restaurant that now serves this thing. Ugh. It's an enchilada pizza. I am not shitting you. I saw this yesterday and my stomach just sort of went funny. Um, and I thought to myself, well, maybe I need to be stoned or have the munchies or be starving to death to consider a pizza, an enchilada pizza. This comes from a restaurant that is called Vete a la Burger, which literally means go to the burger, but it's actually a game, a word play on the phrase vete a la verga, which you don't want to say at the dinner table, by the way. Verga means cock. And verga is about the most vulgar way which you can refer to, you know, the little guy. Or not so little. You know, that's up to you. Anyhow, um, this restaurant is <laughs> called Vete a la Burger, and they charge... 289 pesos for the privilege. Um, I don't know what to say. I just saw it and, you know, I, maybe I'll smoke some weed and maybe I'll look at the photo again and it'll look more appetizer. I can't make any promises, but <laughs> I thought I'd share that with you. Now, um, I caught this wonderful segment, well, wonderful thought-provoking segment on PBS yesterday that has to do with how wearing a face mask has become a political issue in the United States. Uh, let us hope that this doesn't happen here in Mexico, but it is interesting, thought-provoking, and unfortunate that the notion of wearing a face mask does not come easily to a lot of people. And I think it may be happening for different reasons. Again, I don't want to speculate because... Um, Again, I'm just the owner of my own decisions. But if you want to find out more about what's happening in the United States with face masks, um, I invite you to read this article. Uh, then I got this uh, wonderful suggestion from one of you. Um, and this is about a, a concert or a performance that will be streamed tonight, hosted by conductor Yannick Nezet Seguin, and I hope I said his name properly, um, uh, with the Philadelphia Orchestra, and they're going to feature um, a bunch of interesting articles, Winton, uh, a, a bunch of interesting artists, Winton Marsalis, Steve Martin, Nicola Benedetti, Lang Lang, Rene Fleming, and Yo-Yo Ma. If you want to catch this, um, I will share the headline, uh, the, the URL with you so that you can take a look at it on your own time. I also want to share the story of how an unassuming Mexican photographer from a small town ended up exhibiting his photographs at the Whitney Museum in New York City a few years ago. Uh, and what was the subject matter? It was beautiful Mexican faces. This is the work of a photographer called Dorian Lopez, who some five years ago was working in, in Mexico City and started looking at people, just ordinary people, and saying, you're beautiful, can I take your photo? And, and he started collecting these, these, these portraits of ordinary people, and he ended up um, as part of an exhibition at the Whitney Museum. Um, a lot of what we see in this article by the New York Times in Spanish is uh, men, but he, and there he is, here's a photographer. He has an Instagram page, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of this. Let me get to the Whitney exhibit because the photo was quite spectacular. So here we have it. It was a large format photography installation. And when I went looking at his Instagram, boy, I found gorgeous men and women 
um, in his Instagram feed, just ordinary people, Mexican people from all walks of life, uh, different ages, different body types, different contexts. So I'm going to leave this with you because it made me feel um, not very pretty. <laughs> it made me feel happy to be Mexican. It actually did. And um, the last thing that I want to share is I borrowed this image from my friend Bill Carvalho uh, from his Facebook page. The vantage point that we know at La Cruz on top of El Centro here in Puerto Vallarta, the, the, the vantage point, the Mirador, is now open for you to go explore up there. If you've never been up there, the view of the city from that point is just spectacular. You do have to climb a shitload of steps to get there, but once you get there, it really is worth the view. I know that there are people uh, in town that do walking tours and take you up there, uh, but if you ever want to go by yourself, it's easy to, to get there. Um, and uh, oh my goodness, I just found out something really odd. Tracy Willis was blocked from my channel. Please, this is not something that I did. <clears throat> I will look into this, Clay. Please tell her that I didn't block her. I would never block anyone from my channel, certainly not Tracy Willis. Um, but as soon as I'm done with the broadcast, I'll be happy to look into this. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, anyhow, um, get a chance to go to the to the Mirador de la Cruz if you get a, if you're wanting to go out and about and look at wonderful places and things. Uh, <clears throat> let me take a quick look at your comments. Um, and Sue Pearson is right. Yes, the floods are pretty heavy every rainy season. And yes, we do see that the rivers overflow. But when you look at all the all the dirt and trees and things that were lifted off the Pitiyal River, it does look a little bit extreme. Um, Clay went hiking to Playa Colomitos, packed. Well, yeah, a lot of people want to be out and about, and I I appreciate your sentiments. Sometimes I go out and I'm like, well, I think I wanna I wanna go back home. And in fact, I'm not going out all that much. Although I like to talk about, you know, going out and taking our own personal level of risks. You know, I am trying to be as commonsensical as I can as well. Right now, you know, I'm going to go out to do some video for you guys later on today. And tomorrow I'm going to go up Rio Cuale to do the same thing, to try to get in touch with nature. But I'm steering away from the city as much as I can. I need to go to supermarket, but we know they keep things pretty safe and distant there. So again, we all have our le levels of comfort and we need to continue to, to uh, abide by them. But always try to be as careful as you can. Um, boom, bidding, bam, 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 bam. Carb overload. Yes, Earl, this is not something that we would want to do if you're referring to the pizza. Um, with weed, everything's delicious. Um, uh, no, I wouldn't know about that. I certainly wouldn't know about that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Noi leaves a little, a little bit of love. Uh, come to Thailand or let Thailand come to you. Explore Thai cooking markets, temples, and all the hidden gems with me. And there is a link for everybody to explore. Uh, please, please take a look at that because I'm sure you are going to love um, what Noi is doing. Gorgeous photography, I agree. Um, let's see. Sherry, I'm glad that you got all the way up there. It, again, it's 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 it requires some fitness challenge, uh, but it is it is a wonderful thing to do. Um, if you're planning on doing El Mirador, maybe we can do it together, Joey. I would love to get together with you guys. Maybe we can do a video together because I know that Joey and Isaac for Gay Guide Vallarta are doing more and more videos, and I am so very happy for them because it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, <clears throat> We'll take a look at the situation again. I apologize because I don't I don't block people from 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 this page. I certainly don't. Um, boom, 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 boom. Michael took a big walk from Hotel Mercurio to Galleria Mall. That's 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 quite a walk, and good for you because I'm sure you saw a lot of the city on the way. And um, and yes, that's that's all your comments, and that's all. Um, I see so far, and uh, I just need to tell you a little bit about Sunday, fun day, tomorrow, because we're going to be doing 
all kinds of things. You know, tomorrow is Sunday fun day. If you're new to this broadcast, Monday through Saturday, we remain um, pretty much well behaved. We try to um, keep some, um, we try to keep some, uh, a level of, of newsworthiness to, to our broadcasts. And um, on Sunday, we don't. On Sunday, nothing is sacred. No one is safe. And Sunday will not be an exception. How about some COVID news? Uh, we had some COVID news earlier today. We don't have any new COVID news to share other than the fact that we need to continue doing what we're doing. Uh, we certainly won't have any COVID news tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday fun day. Tomorrow we have <clears throat> hopefully a better throat. <clears throat> okay, enough of that. <clears throat> tomorrow we have a, a choice of three things to explore, or maybe all three, we don't know. We're going to look at uh, some video that I found online that some German dude recorded uh, mentioning the top lies that uh, Mexicans say. So I need to I need to defend my people, yay. Um, that's one thing that we can do tomorrow. The other thing is we're going to learn a totally useless Spanish song, uh, but you hear it everywhere. You hear it everywhere around the city, and you probably never thought about this. And tomorrow you're going to find out, well, what are those lyrics, and what is the song about that happens tomorrow? And last but no least, not least, tomorrow we pay tribute to one of my favorite words in Spanish, and is the Spanish word for fart. And I'm sure you know the Spanish word for fart, um, because somebody, somebody <clears throat> is going to write it in the comments section. I'm just waiting for it. Just waiting for it. Anyhow, the Spanish word for fart is so colorful and so versatile and has so many meanings and so many interpretations. And and it is it is just a wonderful, a wonderful word. Um, and tomorrow we're going to celebrate it by exploring a compound phrase. Uh, oh, there you go. There you go. See, I can. I love having this show with and for locals because you guys know your pedo. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to explore tomorrow. Uh, this beautiful word. Oh, gosh, even Noi knows a word. Of course she does. Noi speaks Spanish fluently. And if you've ever seen her in her kitchen, good Lord, she can harness the wrath of testosterone ridden chefs and cooks like no one I've ever seen. Anyhow, tomorrow it's all about celebrating this extraordinary word and we're going to look at some usage. We're going to laugh a little. We're going to fart a little and we're going to turn the fan on and we're just going to get a little vulgar, um, a little raw. So just be forewarned. All of this happens tomorrow. Between then and the, uh, now, of course, Please find a way. Let me get rid of uh, kitty fart. Bye bye. There you go. Between now and then, please stay healthy. Please stay happy. Please um, stay creative. Please smile. Um, it is the weekend. Try to get out there as much as your comfort level will allow. Uh, and um, just have a good day. Share news about this program with other people. If we can bring more joy to other people and a smile to other people, that'll be awesome. Uh, consider supporting the program if you want or can. If not, simply the fact that you talk about it and you recommend it to your friends is golden to me. And of course, to Luna, who is not sitting here with me today. I think the blanket's a little bit warm for her. I'm going to place a small fan for her just to see if that entices her a little bit. But I'm starting to ramble, and that means it's time to go. Have a great day, and I will see you again soon.